Well, talking about the uh, security situation in the southeast in Nigeria, it has become a, a worrisome issue um, that is gradually getting out of hand. The recent attack on the police headquarters and the correctional center in Imo State and the attack by Hesman, the crisis thereafter, the unending Boko Haram, the not too, too long answers, agitations and what have you that has committed to the crisis and insecurity in this country uh, points out one fact that all these activities, whether direct criminal or indirectly or whatever, uh, they are all products of poverty and products of injustice. So, um, all efforts made by government um, using the police and the armed forces to fight insurgents and to fight these criminalities have not yielded much result because uh, we are simply fighting the symptoms and not the disease of poverty and injustice. Um, so, talking about the security situation in the country, um, it's overwhelming. Quite frankly, it's overwhelming. And we're no longer talking about um, the things that happen. We're more concerned about what is to happen in the future concerning the insecurity. So something must be done, and as quickly as possible, too. Well, I, I, I think I would rather say that um, the past government or leaders either do not really understand that um, these two enemies uh, are the real enemy of Nigeria. But they have represented in a different way. To some leaders, it's corruption. To some leaders, it's illiteracy. To most of them, lack of power, unemployment, and what have you, without addressing this main issue which is the poverty and injustice. Uh, uh, so if you say they have failed, it's not really failing. But uh, uh, rather, if you ask me, I say we've been fighting the symptoms. Past leaders have been fighting the symptoms and not the disease. Uh, a typical example is if, if you are suffering from diabetes and you have sores on your foot and you decide to take bandages and tie the wound and, and without treating the disease, uh, then you, you've done really nothing to it. So uh, I wouldn't say that past leaders have failed, but rather past leaders have often concentrated in fighting the, the, the symptoms, the products, the outcome, not the main issue. And until we address the issue of poverty in this country, the issue of, uh, of injustices in this country, these elements will keep coming up. Uh, so that's, what it's, uh, that's how I would rather put it, not really that they have failed, but that they've been fighting the wrong battle, if you like. Well, uh, I, I think that's a common mistake or common, uh, it has become a national item. When any leader in Nigeria loses focus or does not have an answer, uh, the easiest way to escape from it is, is to politicize the matter and say politicians. And then <laughs> it's just like when somebody says, uh, why have you not, uh, why has this happened? Well, he says, God. Uh, but you are there to take responsibility. That's actually the essence of leadership is for you to solve the problem. So when you try to shift it and say it's been these politicians or somebody have done that, then it means that something is wrong. It means that you're not in charge. Anytime leader says, look, it's not me, people, politicians, politicians have done this or that, and done that, means that he himself is not in charge. Because if he's in charge, no matter the politician, you should be able to address the issue. So these are smart ways of escaping from responsibilities. And and he presents a leader in such a manner as if he's visionless, clueless. He doesn't know the, 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 the solution to the problem. 
and I, I, I would have advised the governor of Fremo State to have made wider consultations, especially those of us who have been here, there before him. I, I was there for eight years, and there was peace in that state for eight years. And the IPOB was there, and all this uh, kidnapping were all there. But how was I able to do it that I had peace for eight years? That should have been a reference point. But you know, in Nigerian democracy, there's no continuity. Somebody wants to start something from the way he lies on the angle. And when they get into the murky water, now they look for who to blame. And that's the problem in this country. That's why every past leader blames this. If you ask Hope, Hope, Hope is man will blame Rochas. Rochas will blame uh, Hakim, Hakim will blame them, will blame will blame this. And cycle club blame. People should take responsibility. Leadership is to start with, take responsibility. So there's a failure of leadership in the state. And wherever you see crisis, or uh, insecurity, leadership must take responsibility. That's my only anger with most politicians when they don't want to take responsibility. Listen, if something is wrong in this my office, this Unity House office, hold me responsible. If something is wrong in my family as a head, hold me responsible. Until we begin to take responsibility and stop pushing blood, then we cannot make any headway. What is the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria and commander in chief of the armed forces? So if anything happens in the country, he should take responsibility. And so also whoever is the president should take responsibility. He has to. He has no choice. Who will he push it to? He cannot push it to me or you. He's the president, he's commander in chief. But you see, people take responsibility in different forms. Some share away from it, some confront responsibilities. I confront responsibilities. If you ask me, I say, I take responsibility as the president and commander-in-chief, as the governor, as local government chairman, I, I'm in charge. And if there's anything that goes wrong, hold me responsible. That's how to, that's how to do it. I mean, that, that's the way to go. And then if, if you need to make apologies, you make apologies. If you, if you are fun as a human being, you're not perfect, you can say, listen, I, I failed in this area, and, and I, I think we'll get it right. That's how to reassure citizens. The, the, the point I'm making is that they can't even share away from the person. They can't, even if they want, they cannot. Because you are the president. Don't understand the point I'm making. It's gone beyond that. It's given. The mathematics will say it's given. You can't change it. You must take the responsibility, and there's no way to it. So this is how it has been done. And everyone should take responsibility. In fact, that's the problem we have in Nigeria. People don't like to take responsibilities, they like to blame. Take, for instance, Governor Fimo said. A major thing like, like, like attack on the police headquarters have taken place. A, a major thing like attack on the prison, correctional center have taken place. And you have some of these young men, there are people in, in the prison. And there have been several security reports that they are likely to come and take their people from the prison. You did nothing about it. Now, when they succeeded in the attack, then you come back to say, politicians must have done that. It does not sound funny. So we must, as a leader, take responsibilities. And do not deal with any leader who cannot take responsibility. Who want to push this and push that to this person and say A is responsible, B is responsible. Then why are you there? Why are you there? We elected you to be able to solve the problem. When I was a governor, I took responsibility. And I called him up, if anything happened, take, hold me responsible because I'm, I'm the man on the steering. And it's just like if you are driving a car and you say, look, I have a, a, a car, the car has spoiled something, the car happened somewhere, I had an accident because there was no brake. You can't hold them, but you are supposed to have checked the brakes before going to the car. So I'm talking about the issue of responsibility. And, and responsible leaders stand up to the occasion and say, look, here I am, I do it. I'll get it this done. Well, I, I, I will say to you, I've just said this before, that the major problem we have is poverty and injustice. Now, if those young men or these people are talking about are busy, even Boko Haram are busy, well, why would you have this kind of thing going? Uh, if you have, uh, to, uh, 30 years ago, we had 3.5 million out of school children. We did nothing about it. That ushered in poverty. There was educational, there was lack of educational justice, or education justice. It was, it was like in Nigeria. Like, and today it is 14.3 million out of school children. Now, if 3.5, 30 years ago, is giving rise to what we have today, then imagine in the next 30 years, when this 14.5 will be out of school, and when they become adults, what will happen in Nigeria? That's what worries me more. So, an attack on the, on the, on the, on the, 
the security agencies by by this uh, this agitators or whatever they are called. It's simply a dramatization of them trying to show to my to my own you know small intelligence guidance to show that they can even overpower the the security agencies. It's not an attack on those it's an attack on the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's an attack on the Nigerian government. That's how you should say it. Because these are people with arms who, who will stop them from doing what they want to do. Of course, they are doing the most they are doing. Now remember I said to you that attacking this the way we're attacking it will not give us any result. Because the, the enemy is hiding his face. The enemy is hiding and we are fighting, we are fighting shadow. The enemy we have is this poverty, which provides these soldiers for these people, attackers. That provides them the, the, the leeway to attack. These are the hidden things. And that's where we should ask government, in whatever category, whether state, local government, or federal government, to attack this enemy of, of, uh, of uh, poverty and uh, Injustices, and and, and 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 this whole thing will take care of itself itself. I, I hope you know what I mean by shadow. Have you seen shadow before? You, you know the substance, the human being. Even you have a shadow you cast. Now imagine where somebody is fighting the shadow, and beating the shadow and leaving you. It's done nothing. That's the point I'm driving. That's this major point that people don't understand. And, and sometimes you you're not addressing the issue. You're addressing the issue of. Uh, the consequences of this, or the actions of these enemies I'm talking about. That's why I'm asking government to do that. Even if you bring in the, um, uh, 50 million soldiers, uh, and all of a sudden, those 50 million soldiers are also not well taken care of. They're also poor. You still would have the same problem. What am I saying? The economy has a role to play. The economy has a role to play. There's a co-relationship between poverty and crime. There's co-relationship between injustice and crime. Wherever there's injustice, crime rate is high. Wherever there's poverty, crime rate is high. These are two good bedfellows. And so when you treat one, the other one will give way. Definitely not. Definitely not. It won't have any impact because Nigerians are getting wiser than they used to be. Sentiments of where you come from doesn't count anymore. Sentiment of religion does not count anymore. Those were the seeds that we inherited from our forefathers and that has kept us in perpetual political bondage. But now people are getting to be more educated. To understand it's not necessarily that a man from, must come from her own tribe before you, you can benefit from government. Uh, uh, in fact, there's argument now that those who have produced the presidency have not, are not smiling as they should smile. So it's no longer about religion or tribe. It's about individual. It's not even about party. So 2023 majorly will be determined by the character of the person in question, his track record, so what he has been able to do. You can press something to him, be able to, to be able to, uh, you can elect him. So it has nothing to do with. Uh, I don't think it will affect it. I don't think it affect it because uh, um, this attack is not only in the south. Is is in? Oh, you just had their own. Not quite well. Lagos had entrance, uh, Casina here had the uh, headsman, Bruno has been there with Boko Haram, you know. So it's, it's a nationwide problem. But what, I, what I, we are concentrating on who has what it takes to, to, to make this country greater and better again. It's deceiving to say that uh, they are allowed to go scot free. How will you go to, when they damage the crops in Casina? It's not an Ibomas crop. When the headsmen go to Pulse Farm, it's not an Ibomas farm. When they go maiming, killing thousands of people, it's not an evil man or not a Yoruba man, Hausa man. So let us not, you know, uh, most of the time our people create this affection, make statements that are, uh, the ghost got free. It's not true. It's not true. I will forget that anytime there's Boko Haram in Bruno, the Bruno people, some local government have been taken over by Boko Haram. They're not Igbo local government, they're not Yoruba local government. So who is going to call free? These are statements to make to create emotions and for us to justify illegality, to become legality, and, and then oh, we hate people, we hate each other. And that's why we need to get them. Not knowing that what is causing that is, is poverty and uh, injustice. And, and if you don't discuss that, uh, people will not be 
clear as to what is happening. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. Even in homes, when injustice and, and hunger sets into a family, watch the reactions. Only white families come together to deal with it. But if it's not, this, this hidden enemy will deal with the family. Husband was speaking once that. Husband will beat wife, wife will run away, children will scatter, and there's no holding the place. So, rather than that, I would be thinking that people should be asking questions now. How can we fix that? And that's a question most people don't want to ask. What can be done to fix it? How do we get rid of this? It might take time, but until we do that, we cannot speak like other developed nations of the world, where they are used to uh, pride uh, and, and work and getting to experiments. Attacking poverty, attack injustice, matter is settled. Boko Haram disappear, Hesmen disappear, IPOP disappear. Uh, what have you? They will all disappear within the shortest possible time. And to start this, to start the, the primary, the primary step to start, the first step to start is address the issue of families in Nigeria as the smallest unit of government and get mothers involved and they create a financial, uh, 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 financial empowerment for the mothers who raise up their children. Because if all this child comes from a womb, and so when we ignore our women, we ignore our wives, and leave them, they, they, lose, they lose grip of the family. Then that's the price we pay for it also. That's the first injustice I'm talking about done to women in Nigeria, in Africa. When we correct this injustice against women, and have them create a financial inclusiveness for them and empowerment, that will take care of that was the first place to go, at least for the upcoming ones to start with. Because no comfortable woman will not allow her child to go to school. No, no same woman who have given birth to a child will not want the child to be a great child. But when the women are also not included in their affairs and they don't even know what to do, then the problem will have starts. There's no better person to take care of a child growing up than the mother. Let's start from there. I'm just giving you a small clue of how to start solving these problems before we go to the major economic policies and issues. I, I, I would rather not speak about hope as of now. Speaking about hope with the Dima is, uh, is something that I really don't want to do. But um, I, I have time, I just said time will tell. I did not take too long for the for the for hope of the man to exhibit his true person. Because as it is now, most people don't understand his antics, his style, and how he does things. He does nothing ever straight. And he lies a lot. I quote this one, I use the word lie a lot, he lies a lot. And he never straight. And well, I, I I I I pity those that he has deceived so far. Uh, and even from the way he emerges as a governor, and uh, the way he goes about his administration, uh, the way he sets up a white paper, a, a white paper, and bring a white paper, and go against court judgments, and bring down my properties, and do all that. Mm -hmm. But he's deceiving some people here in Abuja. They will get to know him soon. Mm -hmm. we'll hope will soon explain, he will be revealed. Then it's only then that this will be, will be, will be the. The, the, the way to go. Uh, but, but give it to him. Uh, I think he was, he's a champion in what he does. If not, there's no way he would have sat down in his house and write results and bring it to court and be able to justify court from number four to be number one, that he can do anything negative. So I, I don't, uh, right now he's saying that his politician and his commissioner for information says Rochester or Crocher is telling IPOC to come and, to come and attack, attack uh, police, attack uh, prisons. Then I didn't ask them to attack the committee that probed me. Uh, I didn't ask them to attack, attack uh, so I don't know what I would get by attacking police. When I build the best police headquarters for the police, build the best prison command for the police, uh, for, for, the, for the Ministry of Internal Affairs, these two projects are standing there. And that's one of the failures in the security because I saw the location of the police headquarters and police center as a big problem. And until they are removed from there, this will continue 
now or tomorrow. Now the place I built, the best in the country. Let me go there and say, if, if anybody has built a, a police command better than Russia or cultures, police command of my eight years, come and show me this country. If anybody has built a police, I mean a prison correctional center better than ours, come and show me this country. But they're allowed to rot for political reasons, for politics. Move this to there, because if this image were there and police headquarters, I mean police were there in that building, this couldn't have ever happened because of the stance of land and security network around. I could have put, because these are some of the last projects that I completed. And it was commissioned by the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But that, I had only about one week ago, or two weeks ago, when I was commissioning these projects. Remember, I was in the character of building project without commissioning. So I, I, people insisted that I must commission. I'm not, I'm not a fan of commissioning projects. To so say after you build, then you spend, uh, so spend 10 million, 20 million to gather people to commission what? I mean, what is there to, to really commission, celebrate actually? So I, I started this online commissioning. When I said this project is created by commission, online, I started this online commissioning before the before COVID-19 came and people adopted it as a world of commissioning. Why do you want to spend that huge amount of money? Do you know for every time a vice president flies here or a president leaves Abuja and comes to Imo State, it doesn't cost anything less than 50 to 100 million naira. That movement, security agencies, everybody. And sometimes the government ends up commissioning a 200 million project. Take for instance, the projects I've completed in Imo State, commission is the one the governor is commissioning. All of them. So how do, how do I deal with the situation? And then the vice president, the senior president, will take presidential jets with all the security. Some will go by road, some will go by air. Hotels will fill up everywhere. And then there will be an activity for that day in the state to go and commission a project somebody has already commissioned. Does it make sense? One that is being commissioned by the senior president, Akachi. Akachi Road was a road I started from. From beginning, there was no road there at all, at all. It was no road. It was not contemplated as road. When I came, I changed from bit of the master plan to accommodate for, for traffic. <coughs> so I made a brand new road that today is the best road that stopped the traffic at Emmanuel College roundabout. I created a new road called Akachi. And I built Akachi there, the one that he had uh, tried to demolish. A 270 meters uh, tower called Hand of God. The name that Akachi Road came from that tower, Akachi Road. I said, well, that's road, finished, commissioned. Now, today I'm reading that it's being commissioned by a senior president. The next banquet hall in the government house, built by my government, I've been using it for the past five, six years for different functions. That is being repented and recommissioned. All the roads in Nemo said I do is being, being recommissioned. I don't understand. If there were potholes and government made potholes, potholes does not allow you to recommission a road, for, for God's sake. You have to get fresh projects. And the most annoying thing is that when he commissioned them, he changed the names. The name. I catch road now is a van and one road. How can you change what you do? So how? And you know what what the, the what the the only thing they hold against me is the fact that I built several projects without commissioning them or making it like a, a big deal. No. But I I I I I built more than 2,000 projects in Emo State. Does that shock you? And I'm here to stand anybody boastfully with my shoulders very high to see anybody who can come and say it's not true. Or whether that anybody in that state, any government in that state that have done 50% of what I've done or will ever do. That's how, that's how much I feel when I speak about with passion. There's no projects you can go there that's not done by Russia's oppression. But yet, if you go there, you won't hear about it. So what you're going to hear is, oh, he did substandard work. <laughs> he, did, uh, he did nothing. Yeah, the same projects I've done, that's the one you're doing. Nobody can, they can't even argue that. So this is my problem with the uh, most government for now. I'm not corrupt. I'm not corrupt. I hate corruption. I hate corruption. But I'm not a saint. I, I'm not perfect. And there's no project in Nemo State I've done for which, if you compare the average price of doing the project, you, you cannot find change for Nemo State government. I hate corruption. And let me say to you that I'm sure you, as I start today, as I start today, I have no bank account. That's what you should ask me. I don't have bank account. I don't have BVA number. 
this stuff, this thing, I, I don't get excited about it. But people don't know. And the only thing that takes money from me in my life is my charity works. It's to train these poor kids. Do they have about 25,000 children uh, from all over Africa that I train up to university? That's what takes my money. But what, what do I do? Why do I keep my money? I don't keep money. I have grown up children. They, they manage my life. They manage everything. I have nothing. If I want to travel now, they have to give me money to travel. If I want to eat, they give me money to eat. So this has shaped my life. So I don't need money for it. It doesn't make me happy. Even, even, even champagne and traveling abroad, only property abroad doesn't, doesn't give me joy. What gives me joy is just taking care of me. Uh, let's play. If I'm able to change somebody's life, I'm taking care of me. Let's be friends. But I don't need it. Why should I even take the wealth of this country outside? Why? But you know what I call corruption? In the recent, corruption is the money of Nigeria that goes outside and still doing nothing. That's the worst corruption. Maybe you. Maybe you. I don't know. But you're the person I'm seeing here. It's maybe you. Well, because I, 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 if I'm the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I'll fight corruption differently. Awesome. I'll fight differently, really, quite frankly. Because I'd rather embark on, on corruption prevention than fighting corruption. It's too expensive to fight corruption. And corruption brings about, fighting corruption brings about more corruption. So I would have done it differently. What would you do? Well, I've told you preventing corruption, that must be targets. We're Africans. Our DNA is quite different from the one of uh, Americans and everything. And you must use our culture and character of our thinking to govern your people. And the best form of government is that which allows somebody to govern himself. Africa must govern themselves. India must govern themselves in Africa. You can't govern anybody in Africa because it's quite difficult to do so. Why do I say that? I'm coming to you if I have a time for me to discuss. you have time? Good. Now, I'll give you a, a typical example. We have an attitude. It's not DNA. If you call African, you know, African people, Nigeria, they're looking for jobs. But the moment you give them a job, the next line of action is how to run down the job, how to cheat on the job. So we don't believe in collective ownership of properties. We believe in individualistic ownership of properties. That's why I say, my, is my ours is ours. It's our culture. It's in Africa. It's in our DNA. You can't change it. Even if you bring your three children and I give them properties, someone say, this is my own. You see how they're holding tight onto it? It's our culture. That's why if, uh, if uh, something happens to a child and, and your child is a criminal, you can never report him to police. Because it's yours. But the American man would, would take and say, hey, come man, cops, come and carry this guy, man. He's a chase. It's a culture. It's the idea. So you must govern people along their side. So what can only work in Nigeria? What worked in you must say was target. And that's why most people said, oh, Rochester was doing project. Uh, there was no documentation. There was no due process. It's not true. But I had a systematic due process. If for instance, I said, listen, I want to build this house for me. Stick procedures, finishes of bureaucratic procedures. That's why you can't see projects completed. I completed all 90% of my project because of this system. Don't tell me anything. If a commission, I want to, I know this, this school costs like what one, this school bungalow costs about 55 million. I'll give you 55 million. Commission, I just, I just, 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 just give it to me. But if I wait and say, let's all call the consultant and start the procurement process. And start a supervisory process. Director will meet to the assistant director, assistant director will meet to this. Before that project comes back to my office for approval, nine months is gone. And halfway, variation has come. So, a project that will have lasted with five million will end up 200 million. That's the worst corruption in this system. And it still happening tomorrow. And that's what this presidency or about the presidency have not been able to fight. It's called systematic. Systemic corruption is the worst. But when you ask a Nigerian, why well, give me this building? Leave it to him. In fact, he'll bring change for you. He said, okay, thank you, sir. I made it for 53 million, half two million change. Because I was target. Nothing will work in this country. I'm giving people targets. And if you want, I have my little 
my, my little son now, who, who started Wings, Wingis. It's called Wingis business. He, he, he came back from the US after graduating. He's doing chicken chicken wings. I asked my son, why would you want to go into chicken wings? He said, oh. he said Daddy, I want to do it. I said, God, he has opened about five branches. How does he do it? He set up a Wingis now and said, you, but the manager, take 30%. Give me my money. And he gets results. But the moment he employs people, then business is finished. That's why most, no factory will do well here. And if you want to do well, better get foreigners to manage it. Because if you put Nigerians, unless you give them targets and give them their own, their agree, then your business will grow. That's our lifestyle. That's the corruption we'll not be able to fight. The second is the people that lies with foreigners to take Nigerian money abroad. As a president, I'll prevent it. I'll just, I'll just encourage people to bring back the whole money home. If Nigerian money outside in Dubai comes back here, in fact, if, once we bring the money back, I'll tell you if we bring back, I'll give you free land. Give you three or four for like nine years. Build everything that you want. I'll protect it for you. If this country, if this country does not develop in one year, just know I'm not talking to you. I have so much. But the fighting corruption there doesn't allow the, the investors the way they want to come on. Doesn't allow those who have resources outside. Who are Even the clean ones are afraid. If they bring money here, they'll start going through the process of where is money coming from, and then you, you, you lose part of it. It has gotten so bad, if, if you have money in the bank account, some people go and report to EFCC that you have money, genuine money. By the time you are invited to explain your money, how much you have, then uh, you have lost months and years trying to defend your money. So we must, there's certain things that is not, it's not in tandem with our culture and lifestyle. If you don't know the people that you govern, you can't govern the world. But Nigerians are the best when they have targets. Even you now. If I ask you to go and conduct 1,000 interviews, and for every interview you come, I, I give you $1,000. In the next three days, you bring 1,000 interviews. Clean, well reported. But if I ask you now, I'll, go, I'll pay you $2,000 every month, $2,000. Please, can you be my destiny? Yeah. First of all, the foreign money will come and say, I'm not feeling well, I have to take this one case. You only give me about two, 10 interviews in a month. This is your attitude. Even you sit here, all of us are guilty of this offense. So this is how uh, I think differently from the rest of us, the way they think. It's difficult to make any establishment of that nature in Nigeria, of that high class, because of people who sabotage it. The system who sabotage it. I goes back to what I'm saying by target and task. System, it was to work in Nigeria. As a governor of Imo State, I went throughout the whole general hospitals of Imo State and I checked the money I spent every month to the doctors and nurses and, and checked the number of people that attended their hospital. I remember that I, I, I just recorded I was spending about 270 or see something thousand naira per patient, even if you have headache. It was that bad. Now, meanwhile, the whole doctors have their private uh, clinics. These are doctors we have. So I call the doctors. I said, listen, we can't control this one. Can you tell me for every patient that you treat, let me know how much I pay you? Okay, I dash you in the hospitals. They may be paying you for every immolite that comes. I'll pay check for them. I said, no. It won't work. So there's a systematic failure. Then why I was doing that was I was building to seven hospitals. One for trauma, one for psychiatric, one for this. I was doing hospitals all over the place. I have 30 hospitals I do it. Few of them are functional. Some of them have been finished. How they sell for landscape and furniture. In every every level. I want to create more health tourism with this system. I even got to India, I brought some Indians to come and do partnership. But the system will not allow it. That's a complete systematic failure in Nigeria. And unless you apply this rechonomics economic policies, which I will give you some of the hints, you can never make any help. That I succeeded in Imo State was because of this my original Richard's economic theory that works, which is African-styled economic theory, task and target. 
gain the result. Result of the without the bureaucratic bottleneck that has destroyed our economy. This is what, what I did. So saying that these people will go to medical tourism, where people will now go, which hospital will go to? The system even will not allow it to work. Have you sought? The system will not allow it to work. Have you sought medical attention of not being in the last eight years? Uh, no, not quite. Not quite. I hardly fall sick. I, I do my medical checkup here in Nigeria. So you've never gone to No, 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 no. But I have gone once to check my. I had an early foot, uh, this accident. I've was got this to check. Before your tenor? Huh? Was this before your tenor? Be before my tenor. Even during my tenor, I think I went time for regular extra, just to confirm what I have locally. But this is what I'm telling you. But if you call these doctors and say, Mr. Doctor, I dash you this hospital. They to receive life. And remember, I said in our culture, we don't believe in collective ownership of anything. In Igbo, we say, everyone hang with Agon away. That's what we believe. It's in Africa. You can't change them. That's why nobody has sympathy for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That is why corruption must continue. Because as long as it's called government money, people have no sympathy. But say this is, even bring it to community and say this is community money. Who will touch it? Nobody can ever touch it. That's my style of fighting corruption. We must make it the people's ownership so they can do it themselves, govern themselves, and get results. But this is our contract system is a failure. Our system of project handling is a failure. Our everything in the country. That's why you can never see Nepal will never work. Nigeria Airways can never work. Uh, Nigeria hotels can never work. Nigeria mining corporation can never work. Nigeria whatever can never, never work. Till tomorrow, even if you like bringing students of Naira, it will die. Until you change this style. The fight of corruption will be a failure until you change this style. The fact that get, for instance, we, we suggest will never work until you change this time. Because, because DPO does not take responsibility. The gay commander does not take responsibility. They have to wait for chief of the So what this bureaucratic thing along, along the line of poverty? And in fact, the one down was the one up to fail. A sergeant wants his IG to fail. It's an African thing. That's why to change this nation is very easy. Nigeria can be the greatest nation in this, in this world if you apply the right thing and learn the attitude of your people and how they perceive things. But not to bring foreign government policy. That's why when you bring these economic policies of, uh, of, uh, of Adam Smith, those words that are really broken, and our economy in Nigeria, and nothing is working. And if you ask them to say, wow, the, the rate, the racial rate, uh, poverty rate, has jobs, has it doesn't work in Nigeria. They say the economy is, when price rise, demand will fall. In Nigeria, when price rise, demand will rise because it doesn't know when next it will fall. So the thing is, our economy must be localized. Our politics, our democracy must be localized. Everything in Nigeria has not been localized. And that's why I call my economic policy KMR, Kobo Masutan. KMR means all participation, our cultural participation in, that is just an acronym, KMR, Kobo Masutan. You know how reason with COVID and all that. They say it must return in Nigeria. That means the traditional world three things will come back in line with our culture because governing these people outside their culture and tradition can never work. It will yield no result. Since we have been having this Boko Haram in Imo, you ask me a question, how do I check in Imo? You know what I did in Imo? You are from Imo State. I, asked, I had committee government. You know, I have federal, state, local. Then I created four pair of government, committee government. And they, yeah, they were looking at projects. <laughs> Rochas has made a blunder. How can you have, uh, uh, what do you call it, 40 of government? But he works for me. The traditional leaders became governors. The PGs became secretaries. Youth leaders, I imagine, they were able to check crime. In fact, there was one notorious kidnapper that CGC helped me to pick. The guy that killed his girlfriend, killed the mother. They picked him from the village. How? Because the CGC know where they are. This Boko Haram, create 40 of government, culturalize it. Make people take responsibility. If it does not take responsibility, this matter will finish. But for as long as we are making budget here, uh, people are us to hear that one trillion has been given to the army and police. Well, they are happy. Then the system will even keep for the become commercial venture without tackling the disease. I don't know, I don't know if I'm doing enough of your teacher. So this is what we must do. 
and that's what we must come. Let's give you a tidbit of what we can do. I wish you can have time and ask me about how to fix Nigeria in such a jet speed within a year, and I get this nation moving. It's, it's not rocket science. So we're talking about corruption, we're fighting corruption. The process of fighting corruption, corruption becomes corruption, corruption becomes corruption, corruption becomes corruption. I'm sure Mr. President must be tired now. This is some of fighting this corruption would have been good in the military era, not in democratic position. Where you have a court has to have, have to have a say. And then where, where political people can also report wrong things against an individual, just to get him messed up politically. So it becomes like a witch hunt rather than fighting a, a real corruption. So this is complicated because our culture and way of life is not carried along in our policies. <laughs>